Hey guys, Pastor Tim here, and in this video, I'm gonna share some lessons that I've learned as a chaplain. And so if you're interested, let's get into it. I do wanna give a small disclaimer. I'm not a board certified chaplain at the moment, and so all the lessons that I'm going to share with you are from my nine month internship as a CPE chaplain. Now you might be wondering, what does CPE stand for? Well, it stands for Clinical Pastoral Education. CPE is the primary method in training anyone that wants to become a hospital or a hospice chaplain. And so the organization where I got my clinical pastoral education is from the ACPE. Now the ACPE is the leading organization in training and equipping uh, potential chaplains to work in, in, in hospital settings. And so in other words, the ACPE is kind of the golden standard. And so hospitals, when they look for chaplains, they're going to look for people who are accredited under the ACPE. So the question is, how does one become a chaplain? So if anyone wants to become a chaplain, they have to do four units or four semesters worth of in-class training and patient visitations in a hospital setting and each unit requires a minimum of 400 hours and so if you were to do the math to become a chaplain you have to put in at least 1200 hours of training to become a board certified chaplain and so in this video I'm going to share my experiences in my first unit as a CPE chaplain so let's get into it the first lesson that I've learned is that people are fragile yet they are resilient and this is a, a paradox that I don't completely understand but I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people who are suffering who are in pain and who are literally on their deathbeds you know each conversation that I've had with people just reminded me of the frailty of human life sickness pain suffering can interfere with our lives at any given moment and I've seen how debilitating and how depressing it can make people feel Yet at the same time, I've seen people muster up some strength and resilience from within to overcome their physical ailments. And so I've seen a lot of mental toughness from patients in the hospital setting. And so it just reminds me that human beings are very complex, right? We are frail, yet at the same time, we can be resilient. And so it's just a paradox that I don't really understand even to this day. The second thing that I've learned is that presence trumps presentation. Now, let me explain to you what I mean by this. Um, I remember my first overnight on-call shift and I was called to the ER at 2 a.m. And as soon as I arrived in the ER, I saw a man who was crying and who was at the bedside of his wife and he was holding so tightly onto his wife's hands. And later I found out that she suffered a severe head injury. And I'm not a doctor, but the situation didn't look that great. Now you have to keep in mind, I'm extremely nervous. I mean, how do you console a man who is on the verge of losing losing his wife of nearly 40 years and so I'm thinking in my head what should I say what is the right thing to say should I even say anything and the moment that I sat down next to him that man began to share all the stories that he had with his wife and it was at that moment that I was reminded that silence is golden you know all I had to do was listen with empathy you know in those moments in those vulnerable moments you know people don't want to hear a sermon they don't want to hear an inspiring presentation but all they want to know is that someone is with them and someone is listening to their struggles and that's really all I had to do and it was at that moment that I realized the importance of just being present you know one of the titles that we give to God in the scriptures is Emmanuel which means God with us and that reminds me that I don't have to have all the right things to say I don't have to give an inspiring presentation I don't have to preach a sermon but really what is most valuable in that circumstance is just being present present. So the third thing that I also learned is that medical staff need spiritual care as well. You know, the medical staff, they work in a very high stress environment. I mean, doctors and nurses are working with patients every single day. And sometimes these patients can be very demanding. They could be very frustrating to work with. And a lot of times the nurses have to deal with them every single day. You know, nurses, they put their patients needs before their own. And so it's really a sacrificial profession. And sometimes nurses go underappreciated many times in their field and so I remember a conversation that I had with the nurse and she shared how stressed out she was how burnt out she was and how she felt underappreciated at work and at that moment I felt this nudge to simply just affirm her and to pray for her and as soon as we, we ended our prayer you know she was crying and I think that just reminded me that medical staff you know they're people too they need spiritual care just as much as the patients and so if you are in the medical field
field. I applaud you. You are doing a great work. I appreciate you and, and continue to do what you are doing. The fourth thing that I learned as a chaplain is that there is healing power in touch. Now generally, you know, touching is frowned upon in our society and culture, but if it's used well, if it's used wisely and at the right time under the right circumstances, you know, touching a patient, you know, either on the hand or just even on the shoulder can be a powerful tool that a chaplain can have to bring the presence of God and to bring healing to a particular patient. You know, appropriate touching can be very powerful especially for patients who don't have a lot of visitors or patients who have some kind of physical deformity because it reminds them that number one that they are not alone and number two that their physical appearance doesn't devalue them in any way and so touch if used properly and under the right circumstances can be a powerful tool a powerful agent for healing for any chaplain and the fifth lesson that I've learned is this are you guys ready and it's that all you have at the end are relationships. You know, the conversations that I would have with people who are on their deathbeds would always revolve around the central theme, and that is relationships. You know, patients would share with me all the regrets that they had of not spending enough time with their family and friends. And so I think this is one truth that we all need to hear today, and that is that the most important investment that we can make in our lives is in the people around us. Because at the end, all we have are relationships. And so this point is not to make us feel guilty or to make us feel Feel ashamed, but I think it, it, it beckons us to improve our connections and relationships that we have because at the end, all we have are relationships. So these are some of the lessons that I've learned as a chaplain. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned a lot and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care and God bless.